Next, we have Snow by Angus and Julia Stone. Uh, anyone who's never heard of it, I was just looking it up and their brother and sister. So it's n not that one is just called Angus and the other is called Julia Stone. It's... <laughs> Her name is Angus, just Angus. If that were the case, it would at least make this band a bit more interesting. Uh, well... Uh, shall I start with my opinion, or shall you start with yours? Um, well, let's just start saying that our opinions are different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think you get, you get yours done out of the way. No, no, you go first, because... I, I don't know, considering our opinions differ quite largely. Yeah, fair enough. No, uh, I wasn't really sure what to expect from these guys anyway, because you know, I heard from you and what your opinions were, and I'd never heard of them before. It seems like they're actually pretty not very well known at the moment anyway, and relatively new. I don't know exactly, I think it's probably the first album or whatever. I think they got a few songs to have at least beforehand. Uh, actually, they've been... A, this is their fourth album. Jesus. Well, okay. <laughs> so I'd never even heard this name before, so that's, that's interesting. Their uh, first album was 2007, then 2010, 2014, and this year. Okay, so they've been around a decade, and I assume neither of us have never heard of them before. Yeah, I'd never heard of them. Eh, fair enough. I am wrong, but hey, it's not surprising to be wrong about something I've never heard of before. Hmm. Knowing is half the battle. Um, don't sue us, please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, I first heard this um, a few days ago, because you know, we decided to do it. And I wasn't really sure what to expect, because not having heard them, and they kind of listed as, you know, regular... Well, I'm not sure how to explain them, either. I think it's kind of indie, pop indie rock kind of style. But... Hmm. One thing that actually did stand out to me is not the first song, Snow, it's off the track. Uh, did it really catch my attention? I thought, okay, fair enough. You know, it's it's indie rock, pop, whatever you want to describe it as. It's nothing that interesting. And the kind of background vocals kind of got a bit repetitive over time. I thought. Mm -hmm. But when uh, the second track, Oakwood, came on, it actually kind of reminded me a bit of Warpaint, honestly. That was kind of the guitar tone they got going on there. Really? Yeah. Uh... A bit more. Probably more towards their kind of earlier stuff, so obviously you've been, presumably you've still only heard their newest album. Yeah. But some of their earlier stuff had this kind of guitar tone, which is awkward, makes me think of a bit. Mm. But that's also 254, which are quite similar as well. But that is very much a positive thing for me, and I think Oakwood's the first track that actually stood out to me. I thought, yeah, I actually quite like this. I think the album overall is kind of a hit and miss, but Oakwood, uh, Cellar Door was another one that stood out to me as being pretty good, I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, was it the second half of the album also kind of lost its way a bit? I thought it didn't particularly keep my attention for very long. So I think it's not just a case of any of it being good or bad as such. I just think it's, a lot of it comes across a bit as a little bit like Miss Potential, I guess. There's a couple of songs that stand out here. I think, yeah, these guys actually do have the potential to do something decent, but I don't think they're quite hitting it, at least not on this album. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely bits I like, so. which is also completely different to what you're about to say. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> yeah. Now, my opinion. My opinion is that this pair are a couple of supremely smug sounding jerk offs that need to fuck off from the mu <laughs> from the music industry wholesale. You did say nudist industry, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I almost got the words nudist and music muddled, so it was mudic. <laughs> um, uh, the thing is, they offer nothing new to the table. I, I've heard their brand of indie pop from so many bands. It's sort of like the Lumineers and Mumford and Sons or any other rock indie pop band you care to mention. Yeah, they do remind me a bit of Mumford the Sons. I, I mean, I, I throughout the album I was just thinking, fuck these two with Ricky Wilson's barely relevant beard. 
I'm sure there's some kind of evil dead analogy going on there. With, you know, beard, trees, some kind of thing. I don't know. Um, but it, the thing is, it gradually got worse for me because very singing stars kind of felt reminiscent of Oasis. And I fucking hate Oasis. Mm, I don't really see that, honestly. I mean, I am not a particularly big fan of Oasis, but I'm not really seeing similarity there, personally. Uh, it, it was specifically in the singing style, not the musical style that I was picking that up in. Hmm, I mean, even just listening to the vocals, I'm not particularly picking it up. Um, I, I mean, how this band is... I can pretty much sum up, as far as I'm concerned, the only reason they've managed the success they have is because they're categorised as an adult alternative band. And... That's a pretty pretentious name. Well... The thing is, Adult Alternative, that's how bands like Train are still relevant. Train's relevant? Apparently. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's because of the Adult Alternative crowd that bands like that still somehow manage to stick around. And I want to burn them all down. I don't know how you'd burn down people, but fuck it, I don't care. Same where you burned anything else, presumably. Yeah. Raise it to the ground. Uh, uh, that's, al- that's always a phrase that's kind of bugged me. Raise it to the ground. I, I know it's a different f- spelling, but it's kind of... <laughs> it's one of those, if you don't know it's a different spelling, you start to go, wait, what? <laughs> and even if you do know the difference in spelling, it's sort of like... Huh. The weird thing is, is whenever you hear something like that, it immediately makes me think of the freaking way that you make enemies pop up in Doom instantly. It literally just raises the ceiling to the floor. Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like, it's just a case of, it literally just inverts physics. It's like, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> See, this, this is how bored I am with the album. I, I just... I start t- talking about the strangeness in the English language and how we've beaten up every other language for words and spellings and rifled through their pockets for grammar. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I just really did not like... I do not like this band. I, and I hated this album for the most part. I, I mean, I will give credit where it's due on the songs that I can praise. I mean, uh, yeah, Celador, that, that's okay. Uh, I, I can live with that one. I think Celador makes me think quite a bit of some of the, the uh, music in Twin Peaks, actually. I can't, I can't comment because I've never watched Twin Peaks. It's kind of got a kind of weird, airy, atmospheric kind of style with the vocal, kind of ethereal vocals kind of thing going on. These are the female vocals. Fair enough. Um, I do genuinely like nothing else. Uh, I'm a sucker for simple and effective love songs, and it it does make me think to when I'm in love with the sentiment, I like you just the way you are. It is one of those cliché, you've heard it in a billion other songs, but I'm a sucker for that sort of song. For me, it is a shining light in this wasteland of redundancy. It's kind of ironic that the one love song is the one that's showing it. Yeah. Baudelaire also has its merits. So... That's... Uh, I, I guess that's three out of twelve s- songs that I... Well, but still, like, a quarter? <laughs> so that's... Uh, let's see. Five divided by four. Uh... That's 1.25 out of 5, which means by v- it's got a similar rating to Goodbye to the Machine, as far as I'm concerned. The original rate... I think that's more of, a, more of a slating against Goodbye to the Machine more than anything else. Yeah. I mean, well, to be fair, first time I listened through this album, it had a worse rating. I actually gave it a 0.83 recurring out of five because it only had two out of 12 so i was having to do this awkward maths of 12 divided by five and then that number divided by 
And it's sort of like, ah, oh, how does this work? And it ended up with this sort of 0.83 recurring out of five. So, <laughs> and the thing is, when I really think about it, Celador is only tolerable. It's not. So if we're going by the gradient of songs I actually like on the album, it's still a 0.83 recurring. And as this podcast is dedicated to giving you honest reviews i have to go with that so as far as i'm concerned it's 0.83 recurring out of five uh for so me well it probably say two simply because it does feel like it loses its way quite a bit but there are a couple of songs here i really quite like uh i guess you're a bit more forgiving because you haven't heard as much of this shit as i have probably true yeah um uh, anyway. Follow me to the bottom of the sea. 